on Business Incorporated today. We see that Echoes Bank for Investments and Development signs a loan with Ghana and the Greed Company Limited it will get some fund from them. We we'll take a look at African currencies' performance. And Godwin, uh, Godwin, Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State challenges state governors to look inwards. Good afternoon. Welcome to Business Incorporated here on Channels Television. I'm Mini John McCoy. We'll begin with uh, market numbers in Africa, where we see positive sentiment in Nigeria as it inches up by another 0.12%, building on that marginal positive of yesterday. But it's not the same for South Africa there. We see that South Africa is down intraday today, 1.55 percent at 64,776.07. Moving to other parts of the continent now, we see Egypt is uh, deeply in the red. But uh, this was for yesterday. Egypt uh, doesn't trade today. So this is how it closed yesterday, more than 1 percent up 1.15 percent at 10,273. So also Kenya. Kenya closed negative yesterday, marginal at 0.05 percent. And then we move to the Middle East, uh, where we see negative sentiments in the markets that are open today. Half of it is not open in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. We, it's uh, dipped 0.18%. Uh, there you have it. Abu Dhabi is down 0.18%. Dubai is down 0.11% at intraday. The other markets are closed for today. Uh, but uh, yes, they are closed for today and not open. They do not trade on Fridays. Let's head to the UK now, where Juliana is standing by. Uh, Juliana, uh, good afternoon. Uh, UK is still obviously in the news. Uh, it's, a, it's a new dawn for the UK. Now we see the new finance minister, Jeremy Hunt, vying to do whatever is necessary to bring down the debt. Uh, and, and I wonder what ideas, do we, do we know what he's planning to do to bring back debt at a time like this when countries are being almost swallowed in debt. Good afternoon, um, Inni. Well, there are going to be some difficult decisions that Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, will have to take in the coming days. Uh, but I would say even more difficult uh, decision making for whoever is going to be the new UK Prime Minister this time next week, because they are almost certainly going to inherit a recession and the economic data that's come out from the Office for National Statistics this morning, morning certainly points to that. Um, there are two. The first one, of course, has got to be a government borrowing, which is almost at 100% of GDP. This is the highest uh, borrowing in September that the government has witnessed on a record. And a lot to do with that is inflation, which has reached um, double digits right now. We also had a data from retail sales showing that retail sales dipped uh, by 1.4% in the month of September. This this is more than a third of what expectations uh, were for the month of September. Yes, we did have a bank holiday for Her Majesty the Queen's um, holiday, but I think, you know, this, her death, um, rather, I think this is just a reflection of the mood in the country at the moment. People just uh, don't want to spend. They're not feeling comfortable to spend because their wages are not going as far as they used to. We do have a fiscal event on the calendar on October the 31st, so in 10 days' time, we are expecting uh, the Chancellor to kind of spell out the short to middle term uh, uh, borrowing plans. Um, borrowing needs to be lower. Um, so it is going to be difficult. We're expecting there to be a cut in public spending, uh, perhaps higher taxes. Uh, but even though the government are trying to calm the markets, they also have to look at the political environment. And uh, people are really struggling. So I don't think it's going to go down well uh, for a Conservative Party on the brink uh, to say that we need to uh, cut public spending. So it's really difficult times. The, the battle for uh, the Conservative leadership continues. And as I was explaining to Laddie this morning, uh, Boris Johnson, Rishi Sunak and Penny Mordaunt are the front runners.
Yeah, uh, Juliana. And uh, you also talked uh, about the markets with Ladi this morning. Uh, has the sentiment gone which way? Which way is it at this time? Well, it is lower. It was low this morning because of the, the political environment that is uh, at the heart of 10 Downing Street. It remains that way at intraday. It looks likely to go into the red um, over the weekend. The FTSE All Share is currently down 0.99%. The FTSE 100, that's down by 0.9%. And the FTSE 250, the domestic market, that is down by triple digit figures of 1.72%. We're still witnessing a fall in the pound against the US dollar. So one pound at the moment will buy you just over $1.11. The British pound is also a half a percentage point down against the euro and down to or running flat against the Japanese yen at intraday in a Liana, thank you so much uh, for that update. Uh, I mean, uh, the UK has a new dawn coming. We'll certainly follow up and see how that turns out. Well, still staying with the markets now, let's see how the United States market uh, is looking or the futures looked. And then, of course, we have our correspondent telling us how it looked yesterday. And uh, the stock futures fell on Friday as investors assess more corporate earnings reports and higher U.S. bond yields. Futures for the NASDAQ 100 slipped by 0.9%. I think we have the numbers there. Dow Jones uh, down 0.29%. S&P 500 down 0.46%. That's almost half a percent. And NASDAQ uh, down 0.80%. Well, uh, these moves came uh, snapped, reported a quarterly revenue of 1.13%. A billion, and that's below expectations. Meta Platforms shares fell nearly 4% in the pre market, while Alphabet dipped. A lot of dip we see in the US market now. But let's get details of uh, Thursday's trading with our correspondent in Washington, Maria Bird. The U.S. stock market closed a bit lower on Thursday as the Dow Jones was down by 0.29%, the S&P 500 down by 0.79%, and the heavy tech Nasdaq down by 0.61%. Many investors are a bit skeptical of the recent corporate earning reports as inflation is still a bit high and is leading to the fact that many banks will begin to continue to raise interest rates. As this has had an adverse effect on the real estate market as well. Six straight months in a row that we've seen a decline in the real estate market. U.S. marketplaces are showing a decline and also the rest of the economy is definitely showing to be suffering from the recent inflation. And still staying with the markets now, um, shares in the Asia-Pacific trade lower on Friday as investors weigh inflation data from several economies. The Nikkei 225 there is down 0.43% at 26,890.5. A Shanghai composite also down, really red market for Asia this Friday at 0.13% for, for the Shanghai composite. And then Hang Seng Index is down almost half a percent. Kospi also down of South Korea, Australia. Uh, AX200 is also down even more, 0.80% almost 1%. Uh, that's how it's looking on Friday. Not a very pleasant sight there. And then in mainland China, boxed the region trend to gain 0.16%. Uh, slight green that we see there to 3,039. Shenzhen component was 0.42% low hour. Well, uh, let's uh, come to Nigeria and see what's going on there. And uh, with the current economic headwinds weighing on the nation's macroeconomy, the governor of Edo State, which is in south-south Nigeria, Governor Godwin Obaseki, believes that the sub-nation nationals have the responsibility to explore their potentials to the benefits of the citizens. Mr. Obaseki shared his perspective with industry leaders in the private sector who were guests at the 2022 Edo State Business Dinner, uh, which was held in Lagos. Nobody saw COVID-19 coming. Nobody saw the Ukrainian war. But with all of that has compounded our problems, 
the huge debt service, the reduction of allocation to states that we are witnessing, to states as we are witnessing, high inflation, particularly food inflation. Only God will help us by Christmas. At the time the floods recede and we see how much devastation has occurred this year, this year's harvests. We're all dealing with a depreciating currency. We don't know where it's going to land. And we have insecurities. With dwindling federal allocations, we see opportunities because it's the states that hosts Nigerians. The Nigerians live in states and local governments. So economic activities naturally occur in these locations. And they are the ones that will have to create the jobs. They are the ones that have to secure the citizens who live within their territory. So the only way out, for, as we see, is rather than continue to wait for a federal government that's struggling to help itself, we as states, particularly for us in Edo State, we've decided to move on and just do things. Imagine that there's no Nigeria, but there is. We can't exist without one. How would we survive? What would we do to keep our economy and our people going? Well, that's a question coming from the Edo State Governor challenging uh, other governors of the state and uh, looking inwards instead of depending on the federal uh, 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 government for income. Well, just before we go on a short break now, let's see what's happening in the oil space. Uh, oil prices steadied on Friday as investors weigh the impact of sharp interest rate rises on energy consumption of setting hopes of higher Chinese demand and output cuts by OPEC Plus and its allies. Well, the fight uh, to fight inflation, the U.S. Federal Reserve is trying to slow the economy and will keep raising its short-term rate target. And the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia president has already uh, said this in an uh, event. Well, Brent's crude is up three cents to $92.41 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude was down 23 cents to $84.28 a barrel. Oil gained support from a looming European Union ban on Russian oil, as well as the output cuts agreed earlier in the month by OPEC+. Plus. And uh, I learned we have just enough time to talk to Chris Kober, uh, joining us from Berlin. Hey, Chris, good afternoon. Well, the final one for the week now. We hear that uh, the vice, uh, your chancellor, Olaf Scholz, uh, is being criticized strongly for uh, planning to push through with the Chinese investment. Uh, what's this criticism about, and, and why is he receiving so much knocks? Well, critics are saying that uh, Chinese shipping giant Costco, which is already the port's biggest customer, could get too Unfortunately, we lost uh, uh, Chris right there. Okay, so let's take that break now. When we come back, uh, we do have uh, take a look at currencies. This week, we, we, this week we've talked we've talked about uh, a Ghana CD. We also have something about the Egyptian pound, and now we see the Ethiopian bear all receiving knocks, and uh, we see them underperforming. But we'll delve into all of that with Matt Kindiger. That'll be after the break here in Business and Coffee. Said to join us again. Welcome back to Business Incorporated here in Channels Television Now. Talking about those currencies uh, here in Africa, Ethiopia has ordered banks to deny foreign currency to businesses importing non-priority goods in an effort to shore up dwindling foreign reserves 
in the country. The move effectively freezes the imports of dozens of items such as alcohol and cars as businesses must register with banks to obtain the foreign currency needed to bring goods into the country. Let's find out what impacts this will have in the face of, of course, the global headwinds we've been talking about. We have Matt Kendiga joining us now. Hi, Matt. Good afternoon. Good to have you, even though it doesn't look so good for a lot of African currencies at this time, Matt. So uh, when we see these efforts by Ethiopian government, I mean, this sounds like what we're already doing here in Nigeria. Uh, what impact can we expect from this? Hi, uh, great. Well, thanks for having me on the show today. Um, uh, uh, yes, certainly we we are seeing quite severe foreign currency stress across um, sub-Saharan Africa, including in Ethiopia, as you've mentioned, Nigeria as well, uh, some depreciation as well as foreign currency shortages. In terms of the impact of um, foreign currency shortages, uh, well, we're finding uh, multinationals are, are really struggling to access foreign currency. Domestic companies as well struggling to access foreign currency. But in terms of why the um, central bank is, expect is doing this at the moment, so foreign currency shortages in uh, Ethiopia have been a problem for a long time, but they've really worsened as a result of two factors. One is the domestic civil war, and the other is the uh, Ukraine conflict. Uh, we, um, we've seen investor sentiment dry up very significantly in Ethiopia as a result of the, the civil conflict. Uh, and we've also seen the, the country's terms of trade, the trade balance, deteriorate as well, as the cost of commodities globally has skyrocketed, really. So um, the cost of imports has, import, uh, has increased very significantly, uh, and the government is trying to, and the central bank is trying to uh, uh, prevent a run on the on the beer or a very a significant depreciation of the currency um, over the next couple of months. Uh, it also wants to avoid the sort of inflationary spike that we're seeing at the moment. So um, certainly, the government is under a lot of pressure to present uh, to preserve its foreign currency reserves. One of the other factors, though, which is very important in our view, is that the central bank is probably trying to preserve or prioritize foreign currency access for the armed forces because as we know the the government's civil war in the north of the country is very protracted um uh, it's been going on for a very long time and the government is is struggling to to emerge victorious so certainly we we do expect this is a reason why uh, there are severe foreign currency shortages there yeah, but I guess we can hardly have this conversation without talking about the civil war there, you know, and the outlook and how, and the role it plays in all of this. Yes, that's right. I mean, the civil war is, well, an end to the civil war is a prerequisite for improving access to foreign currency, improving foreign currency availability in general. Uh, our view for the civil war is that it is very uncertain, um, although... Uh, there are maybe increasing signs that both sides, so the central government and the TPLF, uh, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, are increasingly enthusiastic about coming to some kind of deal. Our view is that we're probably going to see a cycle of um, fighting interspersed by uh, truces that are broken quite easily, so fragile truces, probably for the next three to six, maybe 12 months. Um, although both sides want to come to a deal, they're so far apart in terms of their negotiating positions and their ability to reach a, a sort of a meaningful settlement that we don't think a long-lasting uh, peace deal is uh, is going to happen very shortly. So we would expect the status quo uh, to continue. Um, uh, this does mean that we expect economic reform and investor sentiment investor sentiment in the market to remain relatively muted for the foreseeable future. So we don't really expect any significant change uh, to the way that the civil war uh, pans out over the next few months at least. So with this, with this outlook, how are businesses uh, approaching Ethiopia? Yeah, so the combination of the civil conflict and the foreign currency shortages made a lot worse, uh, um, uh, over, well, which will be made worse by this recent change in uh, legislation to, to ban non-essential imports um, or access to foreign currency for non-essential imports does mean that companies are taking a more cautious approach, especially foreign companies towards Ethiopia. It's a, it's a really interesting uh, change in attitudes that we've seen. So about two or three years ago, most of our multinational clients that we advise 
were very enthusiastic about Ethiopia. They were ramping up their investments. They had very ambitious growth plans. Um, but what we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months is that most companies are either um, putting their investment plans on hold or they're shelving them altogether. I would make it very clear, though, that very few companies are divesting. And this is because Ethiopia remains a, you know, it is still growing and it is a large and quite attractive economy for many companies. Uh, also, companies operating in Addis Ababa are not directly aff affected by the, the civil conflict. And that is where the majority of economic activity takes place. But in order for businesses to view Ethiopia much more favorably and to restart their investments, we would need to see a permanent end to the civil conflict and also a significant improvement in access to foreign currency um, uh, uh, over the longer term. So a couple of things need to change before businesses become a bit more enthusiastic about investing in Ethiopia. Yeah, we look forward to those changes uh, that are necessary, Matt. Thank you so much sharing your perspective with us. Thanks very much. Well, still talking about currency. Now, Egyptians' currency will weaken at a steeper pace than expected, although inflation is likely to decrease over the next few years. The Egyptian pound trading at 19.61 to the dollar is expected to fall to 21.16 by the end of this fiscal year and as far as 22.08 by the end of next year. In July, respondents had predicted a more conservative devaluation reaching 19.86 by the end of 2023-2024. Uh, remember that uh, Egypt began allowing its currency to depreciate in March when it stood at 15.70 to the dollar. And uh, this weekend, IMF and Egypt are supposed to have an agreement on financing, which has been described as imminent. And the Equivis Bank for Investment and Development, EBID, has signed a loan agreement extending a facility of $60 million to the Ghana Grid Company Limited. The facility is to finance the installation and upgrading of transmission lines in Ghana. The president of EBID observed that the project was in line with the bank's strategic objectives and aligned perfectly with Ghana's agenda for jobs. Two, taking his turn, the chairman of the board of directors of Greco uh, indicated that the project will be undertaken with EBID's facility where part of a broader plan to upgrade and install infrastructure to continue to improve efficiency and increase the transmission of power within Ghana and other West African countries such as Togo, Bene, Burkina Faso, Mali and Cote d'Ivoire. That's our package for Business Incorporated for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm Ini John Mekwadi. Remember to join us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Capital Market will be here, and Ladi Williams will give you a summary of what's going on or what happened in the markets this week. But I'll see you on Monday. God's grace. Have a great weekend.